So they spend a lot of time as they're following, we'll get to the following stage first, to prove themselves. So it's almost like, yeah, I'm following, but I'm on, but I can do this myself. See, first of all, I, I'm a leader. I'd rather you not follow. Just as a leader, I'm like, I want you to follow, but I'm not excited about you following. Because I'm like, why are you tripping? Just, I'm, I can't serve you when you're stopping to prove that you're, that, that you're equal, you're better. I just, you know, so we, we got to take a break for me to go, to overcompensate, to go, listen, you, you're, you're, you're the greatest, you're this, that, and the other. Once you get here, you'll be fine, but I got to give you this preparation. Who wants to keep doing it? You know, well, just God, be obedient to God, God telling you to follow. This is what God told me to, 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 to take you. You know, like remember John, John prepared the way for Jesus. But imagine if Jesus rolled up, listen, I'm going to be the Messiah. I might go down that path, I might not. But John was preparing the way. John was preparing the way for someone that's supposed to be greater than him. But that John didn't choke and go, listen, what for me, dude? You wouldn't even be uh, in this Messiah position. No, John actually was like, oh, no, no, no. This come, this somebody coming greater than me. Every, every level of leadership position you get in, there's somebody coming greater than you. See, so, so again, now you, you have to, so you have to follow with humility, but you also have to lead with humility. Because you're serving. There's so many people in this room, on this line, uh, that's uh, coming to this church that's going to do greater things I ever could possibly think about. It. So I'm preparing a way for something that's greater than me. So I have to be secure. I can't be like, man, they bother. If I give them all that I got, they going to blow up. Then what's going to happen? You know, I, uh, as I used to get revelations, and would teach it, uh, I remember being tempted there, you know, I mean, I was young in ministry, and the first time I taught something uh, to the youth, I gave all these different examples, props, had called people up, the power God hit the place, it was just, it was, I mean, folk crying, the parents was crying, so then later on we had uh, a ministry later on, the youth had a ministry, uh, an arts ministry later on, so within their little program, what they would do is they would break out and minister. So they would do what they were doing, but they would break out minister. So the leader broke out and taught everything that I taught that morning. Used all the examples, like to a T. It was the example. Remember we talked about uh, yesterday, we was, was talking about uh, mimic. It was everything to a T, like exactly where I did it. But you wouldn't have known I did anything that morning. They, now, one time it was like, you know, like this morning, when we was at the, it wasn't even like that. It was almost like fresh revelation. So I was sitting there, I was like, could you, like, can a brother get a shout out? At least, you know, I'm like sitting right here in front of your face. You know, no. And so, I, so after that day, I was tempted. I was like, well, maybe I should, like, watch what I say, because I don't want them to be like, because they had a, a platform and a venue outside of where the, the, the church, the youth ministry. So this was at another church. With you know, with all the with people, and they, the people was hyped. That's all I thought. Oh my God! And I'm sitting there going, "But actually, the Lord used me this morning." To, and, and you should have been there, right? you know. But I had to realize that it was for that person. Whatever that person had the platform, the people were supposed to get the information. They weren't gonna get it from me anyway. You know. Now they still could, you know. Yeah, the honorable mention. Shout That's only because that's what I do. Like, you guys would say something to me, and I'm like, you know, like uh, Ernie was saying the other day, you know, or like Lamar was saying, oh, guy talk or something, you know, but some people flow different. But, but again, what I had to realize is you could be giving somebody something for a greater platform, so you have to be freely given no matter what. You can't choke. You can't choke because it really, it really wasn't mine anyway. It was God's. Copyright happened. Right? So can you follow, can you lead in humility? The scripture says, humble yourself in the sight of God, you'll be exalted in due time. It says in the sight of man. She says, sometimes we have the form of humility. So in front of man, we're like, yeah, you know, no, no, it's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. But in our heart, there's an arrogance. That's why the scripture says, humble yourself in the sight of God, you'll be exalted. 
So the person that has the form is going, how come I'm not exalted? I presented myself humbly. Because God is going to match your heart. Your heart doesn't match your presentation. Can't hide from God. Right? Uh, the scripture says that God sent you through the wilderness to humble you, to prove you, so you would know what's in your heart in Deuteronomy 18. Because sometimes you think you know what's in your heart, but when you go through your tests and trials, you really get to see what's really in your heart. Um, all right, so again, we have to, uh, something I learned as I've been growing, you want to invite opportunities for humility. Humility. Be willing to be uncomfortable. So you're in situations, I learned this uh, actually from a man of God. We, were, uh, uh, we went to a funeral. So he was asked to do the funeral. So when we get to the funeral, the, uh, just some guy, some pastor from, from the city, he was, you could tell he was, uh, uh, I said something, uh, stick his chest out. You know, he stick his chest out. Like, uh, so so like, he didn't say it, but he was saying it. Like, so like, what are you doing here? But he didn't say what are you doing here. He's like, uh, yeah, so uh, sir, you're here to, uh, you're going to support the family? No, he wasn't here to support the family. He's here to do the funeral. But the guy's like, you here to support the family? So, so he said, so the man of God was like, yeah, you know, I'm just here to support the family. I'm like, because, you know, I'm still fresh out of New Jersey. I was like, man, you ain't here to support that. I, I wanted to say, like, no, we need to do the funeral, right? That's what we're here for. But, you know, I kind of was like, okay, I'll just roll with him. So then we go on the back, and the guy's looking at the program, and he's like, uh, I don't see why I can get you in here. Can't see we can get you in. He said, no, I'm cool. I'm just here to support the family. But I'm sitting in there, I'm like, y'all need to adjust it. Where's the eulogy part? That's where you put them in it. If you only, because that's how I used to, I used to always confront everything. So, so but I'm, I'm just I'm restricting myself. Like I'm sitting here like, like, like this dude, you see, he trying to play. See, I'm from North New Jersey. You know, like I'm just kind of like, why are you trying to play my boy like that? So, then we go, we sit down, we see every, you know, you got all the preachers. So, they, they was all lined up and I was just sitting like right behind them. So then they go around, so the guy says, I'm going to give all you preachers a chance to, to, to say something. you got two minutes. And this ain't no competition. You know, so he goes to each guy, so he gets to the man of God that I'm with. And he says, no, 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 I'm good. I'm here to support the family. So I was like, man. So then at the end, the guy didn't even ask him. He was like, okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to have uh, Pastor such and such. We're going to have him do the prayer. He didn't even ask him to do the prayer, but the guilt probably kicked in, you know. So he does the prayer. So we leave, and I said, hold on a second. I said, you were supposed to do that eulogy. I said, well, well, talk to me. Why did you handle it that way? He says, well, Keith, you know, uh, I have to, uh, I learned to invite opportunities for humility. I said, huh? He says, well, I'm in charge in everything that I do. He says, so when I get to situations where it's humbling, I don't, I don't run from them. I try to embrace it. And I thought about that because we're in that situation a lot. And normally what we do is we try to save face. As opposed to, to what? The scripture says you humble yourself in the sight of God, you'd be exalted, right? They that are, that, that are humble, or they that are, uh, uh, are, are base shall be exalted. But the person that exalts themselves shall be made low. So anytime you get an opportunity to be humble, you should be embracing it as opposed to no, ain't nobody playing. Plan playing yourself. Because God is supposed to take care of you. You're not supposed to be trying to uh, prove yourself, right? Just, you have to be willing to do the uncomfortable, something I share with all the guys or any guy I've ever mentioned. Uh, uh, actually, when I wrote this down, I was thinking about you. I remember sharing this with you a long time ago. I, said, I, saw, I pictured you in my office <laughs> back in uh, Ohio. But, but I remember... Uh, I remember sharing with this gentleman, but I remember, you know, something I've always shared with my son. I said, you got to be willing to do the uncomfortable. you got to embrace the uncomfortable moments. Because, and humility is uncomfortable. You know, so to, to really be a solid leader, you got to, see, you're not trying to prove yourself. You're trying to be yourself. You're not trying to prove yourself. you got to be yourself. You're not walking around, I'm a man. I'm a man. Because everybody in the room is questioning, is, are you really a man? I'm the leader. I'm in charge. Are you? Are you really? Because if you really was in charge, you wouldn't have to say it. You walk in a room, put a leader in a room with a bunch of people, first time in a room, crowd of people in a room, a seminar, workshop, or whatever, you've seen it before. You're, you're going to find out who the leader is. Before that workshop is over, everybody's galvanizing around that person. And
And not one time did they say, I'm the leader, I'm in charge. When they say, okay, well, who's going to speak for us? Everybody in the circle is going, you speak. No, no, no. And you may be going, no, no, you know, yeah, somebody else. No. I think, based on our conversation, you represent us best. That not one time did that person have to go, listen, I'm speaking, I got this, I got this, because I'm, they don't have to go through all that. Everybody knows who's the lead, who the leader is in the room. And see, so when you feel like you have to prove you the leader, you might not be the leader. <laughs> you might not be the one. All right, uh, humility is the key to operating with star authority. And this is the key, pride. Um, and we're doing a lot of practical stuff this morning uh, because we need to notice that pride contaminates the application or the handling of authority appropriately. So when you start to, when you allow pride, see the scripture says your pride comes before the fall. See when you allow pride in, now you have authority, but it's being handled by pride. So you're not appropriating. See authority is something you serve people. You serve people the ability to help them to bore through anything that's trying to hinder them from getting to their purpose. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a pastor, my wife a pastor, she's a pastor. So the level, the God has given us authority to benefit the people we serve, but not to lord over the people we serve. So if we use that authority with pride, we'll just be using that authority. It'll be a, what I call prophetic immunity. So we'll just use it just to, to, for, to cover us. But that authority is to protect you. Yeah, so now, so in other words, we'll use it so I'll say something to you and then you try to come back. Whoa, who's an authority here? What, what? Got a question? I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. Prophetic community. Prophetic community. <laughs> you know, you remember the movie, uh, it was Die Hard? And uh, he, was, he was going to arrest the guy that committed the crime. So the guy was like, uh, the prophetic community. You know, like, you can't touch me. You know, you, we, what we have to do is we make ourselves vulnerable to keep the door open for you to communicate. Now, some people, we were talking about this with a few people this week, and I shared it with my son this week. Like, sometimes people, uh, they have an automatic reverence. Some people have no reverence, but you should have reverence, but the reverence is not for intimidation. You know, so, 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 so what we do is like, listen, before you think anything, talk to anybody else about anything, have a little side comment, so so I say something, I do something, you walk out the door, man, I can't believe he did that. That's so stupid. Why are you even going through all that? All you need to do is talk to me. That's what the child does. The adult doesn't do that. The adult goes, okay, you said something. I just want to know where you were going. What did you think with that? Okay, now that you told me what you're thinking, now I'm going to tell you how it affected me. Now that you know how it affected me, where are we? Now I go, you know where we are? Too bad. We saw I saw such and such. Okay, then walk out and talk about me. It's cool. Yeah, because I just totally disregard it. But don't hear something, perceive it away, process it, come to a conclusion, communicate it to everybody and their mama but the person that should hear it. That's called so in this court. Man, that's 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 one of the things the Lord hates. Because you can just talk to the person. But you ain't talk to them because you want to be mad. All right, so grace allows authority to be uh, received without resistance. So the scripture says, uh, he resisted the proud. See, see, God is the authority. So when we're walking in humility, we're, we're, so, we're, we're locking ourselves up to God's authority so people receive us like they're receiving God. So pride contaminates that authority. So it filters the way God wants that authority used and exacted so people don't receive from you as if they're receiving from God. They're almost like questioning you. Like, who are you? Like the sons of Sceva. Yeah, we, Jesus, we know Paul, we know, but who are you? You ain't nobody. <laughs> but pride uh, helps that uh, authority to be received uh, without resistance. So pride, I mean, I'm sorry, grace. So grace actually gives you, grace is favor, but people treat you with favor. So when you, when you need people to do things, they just, fine, no problem, fine. And I just, listen, not only will I do that, I'm going to take care of this one for you too. You see what I'm saying? Because 